Hello and welcome to the 14th installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to understand when and how to use different types of warps. This video will be broken down into the following segments. What variations of the warp command exist? And how do I utilize doors in my scripts? Following these segments will be an application demonstration. In this final part, we will be creating a simple door warp script. Sometimes the player is warped to another map during the end of a script. Scripting a warp is very similar to walking through a warp event in advanced map, only we can be much more flexible with them if they're spelled out in a script. There are a lot of variations of the warp command and not every one of them have useful information surrounding them. We're going to write a script that warps the player to the front door of Moss Deep City's space center. Notice that Moss Deep City has a map bank of 0, a map number of 6, and a particular warp event ID of 8, all shown on screen. We'll start the script with an NP saying time to warp. Next, the player should be warped to the front door of Moss Deep City's space center. To do this, we'll use the warp command. This command has five parameters. The first is the map bank to warp to. The second is the map number. The third is the targeted warp identification number. The last two are reserved for the X and Y position to where we want our player to be warped, but we can just use the value zero for these since we're warping to a specific warp event in advanced map instead of some random position on the map. I've filled out the command. Whenever you call a warp command, the script will terminate as soon as the warp is completed. Therefore, we can't add any more noticeable commands after it. We have to wrap this up with release then end. Viewing the result, the player talks to the NPC and is then warped to the space center. This script relied on an already existing warp event in advanced map, but what if we want to warp the player to any tile on the map regardless of whether or not a warp event exists there? We'll be reusing the same script for the rest of the examples. If you recall, the third parameter indicates which particular warp event we want to target in advanced map. Changing this value to 0xff will allow us to utilize the final two parameters. The player will now be warped to an x position of 0x1c and a y position of 0x12, that is, two tiles in front of the Pokemon Center. Checking in game, this is indeed what happens. Next up is the warp muted command. The regular warp command plays a subtle noise when it's activated in game. This command works exactly the same except it doesn't make any sound upon activation. The warp walk command shows the same effect that advanced maps warp events show when a player walks into a building. This command will force the player to step up one tile then instantly hide the sprite, followed by a speedy warp. The warp hole command simulates the falling into a hole effect you might see in Fire Red C4 Islands. This command only takes two parameters, those being the map bank and the map number of the targeted map. The position parameters aren't needed due to this command's unique functionality. The player will be warped to the exact same position on the targeted map that he or she was at in the original map. For example, when I speak to the NPC, I'm standing at the position 0E0F. The player is then warped to Moss Deep City at the position 0E0F. The Warp Teleport command simulates a spin teleport effect similar to what you might see in Sabrina's Gym in Fire Red or Team Aqua's Hideout in Emerald. We're back to using five parameters for this one as well. The Warp 3, Warp 4, and Warp 5 commands seen in XSE's built-in command helper are just clones of the regular Warp command. There are very small and intricate offset differences to them, but there's not any definitive information on them. Don't use these. The last Warp command is the Set Warp Place command. This command has the same five parameters and is typically used in elevator scripts. Set Warp Place is actually pretty cool. If you warp the player to map bank 127, map number 127, and an ID number of 127, the player will be sent to a predefined default warp zone. Unfortunately, warping to this location through the warp command doesn't work, so we have to use a warp event in advanced map to travel to this ever-changing map location. In elevator scripts, the player chooses which map he or she wants to visit through a script, usually on the wall of the elevator. This script will then set the default warp zone so that the exit warp will take the player to his or her desired map. It's a neat concept. The script shown on screen changes the default warp zone to the space center. Professor Birch's laboratory door has also been redone to warp the player to map bank 127, map number 127, and map ID 127. Going through it brings us to the Space Center. 
Let's move on to doors. Sometimes we will want to open and close doors in our scripts when characters are entering or leaving a map during an event. We're going to be writing a script in which an NPC walks upward one tile, then disappears through Professor Oak's laboratory door. You'll need to note the coordinates of the lab door. In this case, the coordinates are 10 and 0D. So far, the player interacts with the NPC who then says some dialogue. After that, the NPC faces upward and pauses for a second, ready to move into the lab. Next, type set door opened, then the coordinates of the door to be opened. Immediately following this, type door change. The set door opened command only prepares the script to open the door. The door change command does the actual animation. The door to the lab should now be opened. We need to make this NPC move upward one tile, then disappear, simulating a warp effect. To do this, I'll be using the apply movement, wait movement, set flag to keep the NPC hidden, then a very short pause to make everything feel smooth. Next, type set door closed, then the coordinates of the door to be closed. Again, this only prepares the script to close the door, so we need to use the door change command to actually execute the animation. Viewing the result in game, we first interact with the NPC. The NPC then speaks, walks into the lab by properly using the door, then disappears as if warping from the map. That's everything I plan to discuss in this tutorial. Using the information we've learned, we will create a simple script in which the player is forced to walk through Professor Oak's lab door, then warp to its corresponding location. You will not see any of the three door commands used in this script, even though the player will be walking through a door. This is because I'll be utilizing the warp walk command, which does all of the door work for us, if a door exists one tile above the player. One question that may have crossed your mind after seeing the result of scripts that utilize the warp command is how to continue a script after the player is warped somewhere. Since any noticeable script execution is terminated after the warp command, there isn't any way to continue the same script after being warped. In order to do something like this, you'll have to use a type 02 level script in the map that the player is warped to. I discussed level scripts and how to properly insert them in a past tutorial called Instant Script Activation. On another note, the three door commands can be used on any door tile. This means that you can use it on, for example, both house doors as well as Poke Center doors, and the command will take care of differentiating the two types of door animations all by itself. You don't have to worry about specifying which type of door it is you're trying to open or close. We're about at the end of creating this script. Everything that went into making this has been taught to you through this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to either ask over at Poke Community or right here in my video's comment section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the 15th installment of this series.